Don't let me drown. A month of impatient and I'm here. Hello, hi, I'm Lydia. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. How do you, hey, hey, ha, ha, ha. Ooh, language, English. What are words? I wouldn't know. Don't let me drown. Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, hello, I'm Lydia. I make mental health videos here on YouTube, um, as my channel will show you. I'm making this video to talk to you about going back into the community after being in hospital for an extended period of time. Anyone who's new here won't know this. Last month I was impatient for the entire month, pretty much, and I've been in the community since like the 26th of Feb. So I've been in the community now for almost two weeks, and it has been incredibly hard to readjust because you get so used to having to ask permission for everything, to go through something, having locked doors, not being able to do what you want all the time, and just live your life. So then go back to living in a community. It's very hard. It's hard to readjust to living in a community with people and not having all these boundaries it's incredibly hard so i wanted to talk a bit about that transition and what it's been like casual video i've done my eye makeup that's it i'm I, and even like i fucked up this eye like a lot i didn't think you can see on camera so my friend just covering it up because why not this video is an important thing for me. I've never done anything like this before. The transition from inpatient to outpatient, there was no like transition period. I just went from being inpatient to discharge. There was no transition period, which I know there is for some people. For me, it was just bye. Go out to doing whatever you want to do. Go get the underground home. Go, go, go. Bye. And that was all I got. The transition for me has been quite hard, really. Cause I've been busy all the time, I've been keeping myself busy so I haven't had to like focus on the true reality of getting back into the community. I've just been busy doing stuff, went to CK for a few days, went up to Wrexham for a few days, went to a conference. I've been doing all sorts, of keeping myself busy and I haven't really spent time talking or getting back into the grips of living in the community. Like, it's been nearly two weeks and I still haven't been in the kitchen. I just, I found the transition quite easy, but it's also been hard. It's been hard because I have to remember like when to take my meds, all of that. I have to remember to eat at some point. I have to remember to do certain things to maintain a level of being okay in the community. Remembering to take my medication is a really hard one. because so I take my meds four times a day. When I was in hospital, obviously I had to go and get them. They would come and give them to me. I wouldn't have to think too much about time for meds. And now I'm in the community and I was like, oh, I've got all this meds. What do I do? Ah, fuck, help me. I don't hire community support. I do have a support worker who's not NHS based so I do have a support worker but that's helped a bit with the transition. For me it's been quite hard to readjust because going in patient this time was optional, well it wasn't optional but I went voluntarily. I was informal not sectioned so it was very different for me. Coming back into the community I'm just a bit like oh how do I now maintain this level of motivation and happiness and enjoying things it's such a hard thing to come back to. As you go from having all these boundaries to oh you can do what you want, have fun, kids, bye, like do what you want, bye bye, and you're impatient, you're like I don't have these choices, I can't just go and go for a walk at midnight or whatever. There's so many boundaries when you're in a hospital, then you compare it to being at home and you're just like oh fuck, I can't do anything, I can do everything I want and it's quite overwhelming. It's been, yeah, I would say it's been overwhelming because I've, like I said, I haven't really given it time to sink in yet. I keep forgetting that February was a thing. I keep thinking about January and then March because February, I was in hospital. I didn't, I can't remember anything from February apart from like midway through my like inpatient state, it started to click the like my dissociation and PTSD were quite bad. I was losing a lot of time. I really spoke about why I went into hospital, which I might do. I might film a video talking about that later on. When it comes to where I'm at now, I'm just like I need to maintain this level of motivation. I don't want to go back to where I was. I don't want to stay on top of my PTSD. I don't want to stay on top of my depression. Like I want to stay on top of it all. I don't want to go back to where I was, and it's. A very hard thing to comprehend in my head because when you're in hospital you have staff around you to talk you out of these things and just talk to you and when you're at home you're just like fuck I have a stuffed toy or my unicorn copy book like, that's the support like I said I do have a support worker that's not NHS based um, she's basically helping me sort out everything in the community but like she's helping me apply for PIP she's helping me find accommodation for next year which I think I've done now 
she's just like getting me engaged with things to keep me busy. Like her idea was keep you busy, you won't have time to then think about how you feel. Because I found that thinking about how I feel all the time is quite a negative thing. Like if I'm waking up I was like, how do I feel today? Am I depressed? Oh, maybe. Then I start to spiral and I just crash. It's quite hard to explain, but I think I've made some sense in this video in the sense that going inpatient to outpatient, it's hard, trust me. Another big question is, does inpatient help? And I want to put in, talk about this now in this video. I can't make a video on it though about this, so I'm just going to put it in this one. Going inpatient for me was a lifesaver, literally. Um, I've said this in other videos, but Jordan was the one who phoned the police that time for me. They took me to the hospital and I was taking inpatient. If Jordan hadn't made that phone call, I wouldn't be stood here today. Um, my mental health was really in a bad place. Uh, going inpatient for me worked. I'm not saying it's going to answer everyone's problems and it's the answer to everything that you should go inpatient because in my opinion you should try and stay in the community as long as it's safe and have someone to talk to and your mental health's not deteriorating that much I think. Going inpatient has helped me this time and the last time and before then. It's helped me a lot, like it's kept me safe, it's stopped me from acting on really intense thoughts, it's helped with my dissociation issues, it's helped a little bit with my PTSD, it's got me support in place with my PTSD. It's genuinely been helpful. Would I advise going inpatient? No. Like, it's restrictive. Some people need that though and it's okay. It's okay to need to go inpatient. It's okay to think that it's the only option. It's okay to think those things. Obviously, like, you can't just be like, I want to go inpatient, let me go inpatient. Like, it doesn't work like that. Mental health teams on the whole try and keep you in the community as long as they can. In this country anyway, I don't know how it works in other countries, not my place to comment on it. Like, the community teams in London are, because they had my diagnosis wrong, like, in the wrong ordering, I wasn't getting any help. Now it's been changed, I'm getting a lot of help and support and it's appreciated, believe me. Like, that was the main issue for me, my diagnosis wasn't correct, it wasn't in the right order, so I was getting the wrong support, so my mental health was just getting worse. And no one knew why, everyone thought like, oh it's probably just for attention or whatever, and it wasn't, it was because my PTSD had been left untreated for five years. Longer than that, like, I've been experiencing like the nightmares and flashbacks for like five years, but it was getting worse. And if you haven't already, I recorded the month that I was in hospital for, that shows how bad my PTSD really was at the time and it's kind of like that's the stepping stone into my life that this is my life and this is what I'm doing with it. I feel like I've rambled for this video but it's like a bit of a chat isn't it really like we're just talking about things and our feelings and emotions so with that in mind I'm gonna end this video here because I haven't got anything else to say or anything I think could be beneficial to say so I will see you guys soon with a new video thank you for watching thanks for the love thanks for the support and I'll see you guys soon with a new video peace I love it so much. Bam. Bam bam. Bam 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 bam. Da, da, da. My poor camera's gonna get broke my camera doing that. What if I stretch the t shirts through that? Like it's an actual t shirt, I just stretched over my arms. <laughs> I'm a mess. Welcome to my life. Goodbye.